Good morning. Thank you for taking time to share in worship with us. My name is Robin Brown and I am the teaching elder in First Presbyterian Church, Portadown. Today, on this Palm Sunday, we're joining with believers all over the world to remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. On this particular Palm Sunday, it seems ill-fitting to cheer. Yes, maybe we can applaud our healthcare workers and providers of essential services who risk so much in caring for us and others. But singing joyful and triumphant songs seems out of place. Written 200 years ago, the final verse of Henry Hart Millman's hymn says this, Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp ride on to die. Bow your meek head to mortal pain, then take, O oh God, your power and reign. Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Welcomed by cheering crowds, he would soon die upon that cruel cross, but then rise from the grave and now he reigns with his Father. And it is this that stills our heart, this that calms our fears. As John Lennox has written, a Christian is not a person who has solved the problem of suffering, but one who has come to love and to trust the God who has suffered for them. Thus, in times of trial, we can say with Jeremiah who penned these words in Lamentations 3, 25 to 26, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, and this Palm Sunday we pause in your presence, acknowledging you to be Lord of heaven and earth. You rule over all things and nothing escapes your notice nor slips from your grasp. May we have our hope set in Jesus, the one who came into Jerusalem those 2,000 years ago. He came that he would face the cross, bear our sin, rise again and rule forever. We come to worship and to praise him. We come to give thanks to you for all that you have done for us. And we acknowledge that we are sinners. We do not meet the standards that we would set for ourselves, let alone your standards of perfection. We mess up, we get it wrong, our thought life, our speech, our actions displease you. But we thank you that the Easter season reminds us that there was a perfect sacrifice that paid the price for our sin. And because you've accepted that in Christ's resurrection, we rejoice, we hope in you. So Lord, bless this time together as we worship in these unusual circumstances. But our Saviour remains unchanged. And in his name we pray. Amen. We're going to praise God together as we sing, Yet not I, but Christ in me.
Sandra is going to read for us from Mark's Gospel account and the 11th chapter. This is God's word for us in this day. Good morning. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Boys and girls, can you remember a time when you were out shopping with your parents or grandparents and they took you to a large toy shop and encouraged you to buy yourself a gift? I hope you can. Maybe it was your birthday. Perhaps you were spending your own birthday money or, or getting something as a Christmas gift. And sometimes in large shops we see so many good things it's difficult to make a choice. And perhaps you might have had something like this happen. You see what you think is the best present ever. And you say to mom or dad, to granny or granddad, this is what I want. And then they'll say something to you like this. Oh, you don't want that. It'll break far too easily. It, it won't last. Or you make your choice and they will say, oh no, not that, it needs far too many batteries. Or maybe when you show them what you would like, they say, but that's for little children. You're too grown up to play with something like that. You can get very upset about all of this, but I think you know, mums, dads, grannies, granddads, they're usually right. They sometimes know you better than you know yourself. And they can see into the future. They know what might happen to that toy in just a few weeks' time. When Jesus came riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, the crowds cheered. They were like children set loose in a toy shop. They were so excited their king was coming and he was going to give them exactly what they wanted. They cheered. Jesus, the great teacher. Jesus, the great healer. Jesus, the great miracle worker. Jesus, the king. He would help them beat the Romans who ruled their country in those days. He would make their nation great like it was back when David was king. He would set them free to do whatever they wanted. But their plan, but like the toys we might sometimes choose, would too soon be broken. They would be without power. They would not be suitable for them. No, Jesus came into Jerusalem because he was going to die upon the cross to beat their greatest enemy of sin, to give them power to live under his kingship, not free to do whatever they wanted, but free to do what Jesus wanted them to do. And so to live his way and get the very best life possible. They needed to trust him. And we need to trust him. We need to realize that he always knows best. He loves us. May we love him and serve him. We're going to sing a song for the boys and girls. 
Our God is a great big God. Just before Scott brings us the sermon for this morning, can I encourage you, if you are able, to set aside the time between 3 and 4 p.m. today to join with believers all across this island to seek the Lord's face in prayer. These are desperate days and we have no answers to the problems, but we know that God looks after us, cares for us and understands all things. And he desires that we would ask him for the help that our nation and our world needs in these moments. So please, if you can, do pray 3 to 4 p.m. today. And the Lord will be faithful to his promises and hear us when we cry to him. Now Scott's going to speak to us. Hi, my name's Scott McMenemy. I'm the Family Discipleship Worker at Eden Dairy, and uh, we're so glad you can join us and we're so glad that we can meet together uh, when we're apart. Uh, as we come to learn from God's Word from Mark 11, which Sandra read for us, and also from Lamentations chapter 3, let's go to God and ask Him for His help. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Word and we thank you that you allow us to um, meet together in some sense the word lord we are grateful for who you are and what you give us would you help us now as we turn to scripture uh, to see what you have to teach us about yourself and about ourselves as palm sunday lord uh, would you teach us through your holy spirit and be with us we pray in jesus name amen i don't know about you but i i kind of hate this um i i hate it to be honest and i hope you do too. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am really grateful for what the Lord has given us. He's given us technology to be able to communicate uh, with one another. He's given us gifted people who are able to pull this service all together with all the technological advances he's given us as well. And the ability to beam a Sunday service into our living rooms so we can worship together when we're not together. It's pretty amazing, but it's not quite the same. It's just not the same, is it? And we find ourselves in a weird waiting game. Waiting until this all blows over. Waiting until we can be back together again. And it's difficult. It's hard. It's hard to count down the hours when you don't know how many hours you have to count down. 
this this wedding business you'd be tempted to say is not good wouldn't you i mean i know i would and if we think we have it rough with our wedding we should probably put ourselves in the shoes of the of those that we read about in Mark 11, that Palm Sunday passage, the Jews welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. We've been waiting for what? A few weeks. They've been waiting for centuries. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Waiting on the promised king. Waiting on the promised Messiah. Waiting, waiting. And waiting. But ultimately, wasting their waiting. And we know they wasted their waiting because one week after this uh, party atmosphere, throwing their coats on the ground, spreading out leaves, running the streets, shouting, uh, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Not even a week later, they were nowhere to be seen. They might not have been the same people who were shouting, crucify him. But as Jesus hung on that cross, they certainly weren't calling him blessed. That's for sure and certain. So what went wrong? How did they manage to go from a carnival about the common king to rejected, forgotten, crucified Jesus so quickly? Well, they wasted their waiting. They got waiting wrong. As we look at this passage, this Palm Sunday passage, I think Lamentations 3 verses 25 to 27 is a helpful friend to bring along. Lamentations was written when a community had everything stripped away from them and dealing with that. And so it's helpful to teach us how to wait, what to wait for, and realising that The suffering of waiting, and it is a suffering, can also be a grace. Lamentations 3 helps us to see Jesus not as someone that we're waiting on to serve our agendas and our wants, but a servant king worthy to be served. We're going to take those verses from Lamentations 3, verses 25, 26 and 27 to help us Uh, dissect Palm Sunday to see what God has to teach us. Firstly, we see the goodness of the Lord to those who wait for him. Lamentations 3.25 tells us, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. I think the best way to throw a surprise birthday party for someone you love is to pretend that you have completely forgotten about their birthday. And I know this has happened to a few of you. Uh, You wake up and you're expecting something. Not even something big, just something. Flowers or chocolate or or card. Doesn't even matter if there's a voucher in the card, although obviously that's preferable. But you're expecting something. And you get nothing. Not even a happy birthday. And you think, they don't love me. How dare they? They have forgotten about me. And as those bitter, angry thoughts grow and grow and grow and reach a crescendo, you open the door to your kitchen ready to give off and you find standing there everybody that you love. Presents, balloons, cards with vouchers and all. Surprise! And you realise, maybe they're not so bad after all. Actually, maybe they're, you know, pretty good. But you only realise that because the waiting comes to an end. And maybe that was the mindset of those who have been waiting for God's promise all those years. They were actually preoccupied with themselves. And not seeking after God. And so they concluded that God maybe wasn't all that good. Then this messianic character showed up and they thought, well, maybe, maybe he's not so bad now. Maybe he does care about what I want. And at times of waiting, we can often be like that crowd in Palm Sunday. Often in times of waiting, we're like the person who thinks their birthday has been forgotten about. We, we think 
we can think we're the most important person. We are the person who is most inconvenienced about all of this, that we have been forgotten about. And so we forget that God is good and we think thoughts about the one who loves us more dearly than we can ever imagine. Thoughts that we should never think. In times of waiting, we can also find ourselves asking those questions. Has God forgotten about me? Does his goodness toward me cease? Is this it? And Lamentations tells us absolutely not. God is good all the time. All the time God is good and everything that is good, all goodness flows from the abundant life of God. He is a reservoir of perfection that overflows into our lives. He is a never drying well of goodness. Even when our circumstances seem dry and parched. What we can so often fail to understand, or at least I do, like the crowd in Palm Sunday, is that God is good to those who wait for them, him. God is good to the soul who seeks him. God wasn't just good because Jesus eventually showed up. Jesus rode that donkey, the servant king, to serve our every need, to conquer death, because God is good. As a kid, my dad would always say to me, don't wish your life away. I'm sure you've heard that. Maybe you've been told that. I was the, the child who always knew how many days it was until the next birthday party or holiday or Christmas. And I'm sure if you're in primary school right now, you're the same. You know when your next when your birthday is, how many days, how many months it is to Christmas and all that. And when I was in that position, I was waiting and waiting badly for the next thing, for the joy that I would maybe have on that day or for that week. And what was I doing when I was wishing my life away? Well, I was missing out on the goodness that life had for me in the present. Even though in comparison, it mightn't have seemed so good. And Lamentations calls us to see that. Lamentations and Palm Sunday call us to see that God is good now. God is worthy of our praise now. God has goodness for us now. We shouldn't seek that this period of waiting disappears. But we should live in this period of waiting, seeking after God, turning our hearts and minds to God, letting him reveal his goodness to us as we wait as we wait, as we wait. Waiting's hard, waiting often feels like we're not doing anything. But we have time to do that right now. Waiting not like the crowd on Palm Sunday had waited, just thinking about themselves. But waiting while thinking upon God's goodness, allowing the peace that he gives to rule in our hearts and guide or guard our minds in Christ Jesus. God doesn't want for us to wait this waiting out, to find goodness eventually when it all blows over, but he wants us to seek him and discover his goodness now, so that we can recognise what he is doing for us and what he has done for us in Jesus, and then for us to rest in his goodness. God is good. And he shows his goodness to us in his salvation. Lamentations 3 verse 26. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. In a sense, this is what the crowd on Palm Sunday thought they were getting. They thought they were getting salvation. They took to the streets shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna uh, pretty much means save us. They were after salvation. But, but what sort of salvation were they after? Well, the next bit gives their hearts away. They shout, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. And this shows that it wasn't spiritual salvation they were after at all. It was political. Jerusalem at this time it was occupied by the Romans. And so when Jesus and all his messianic trappings came along, these people who had been waiting and thinking about themselves thought this king was here to serve them in the way that they wanted 
They thought Jesus was going to lead this great political military uprising that would rid them of those pesky Romans once and for all. But Jesus didn't come to banish the Romans. Jesus came to die at the hands of the Romans. Jesus came to die for the Romans. Jesus didn't come to meet a political wish list. Jesus didn't come to serve our every whimsical desire. But to serve our deepest need. To give us the salvation that we so desperately need. Salvation from our sin and right standing before God. Jesus came as the servant king to serve our needs, to lay down his life, to pour out his blood, to hang on a cross with ruined nails driven through his hands. He came to die. And to die on our behalf so that if we trust in him, if we believe in him, if we love him, if our soul seeks after him and the salvation that he offers us, we can have that. We can have the salvation that he brings, the life that he promises, the eternity that he guarantees through his resurrection and ascension. This is the salvation that is good to wait for. There's nothing, nothing greater in this world than that. Knowing that Jesus promises to take everything that is messed up and muddled and straighten it out. To wipe away every tear forever and make us new along with all creation. And so as we wait, wishing for everything to be made new at times like this allow, we should wait on the salvation of the Lord. For those of us who are saved, that means eagerly waiting anticipating, lifting our hearts and our eyes to see the promise that one day everything will be made right and well. Everything will be made right. That promise is yours to take hold of now as you wait upon Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus today, well, Pam Sunday tells us that if you ever get whatever earthly thing you're longing after, If that sort of salvation eventually does come along. Well in no time you'll be disappointed. In the case of the crowd in Palm Sunday it wasn't even a week. But if you trust in Jesus you will have something greater than the world. You will have a better gift than anything on your wish list. You will have a greater king than any politician. A greater healer than any pandemic. You you will have a king who laid down his life to give you hope that outweighs waiting. Joy that is greater than the pain and the suffering of waiting. And goodness that lasts and endures and changes lives. So, So trust in him. God is good. He's good to us in salvation. And he's good to us in suffering. Lamentations 3.27 says, It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Well, what's it saying? Well, it's telling us that suffering is often a grace. Mark Vrogop tells us that what Lamentations is saying is that instead of resisting times of waiting and suffering, we should see them as life-changing opportunities. And that it's good to learn this lesson as soon as possible. When those who welcomed Jesus on Palm Sunday realised that he was destined for suffering. They resisted that path and they rejected their saviour. But suffering is not a waste. As Jesus would show greater than anyone who's ever showed it. Jesus would enter Jerusalem and he wouldn't leave until he had endured the greatest suffering ever inflicted on any individual. And he didn't shy away from it. He didn't resist it. And why? Because the suffering that Jesus went through was life changing and eternity impacting. For you and for me. 
His death on the cross wasn't just an event that can make a, a difference, a slight difference in our lives, but it's life giving, making people like you and me life, making us alive if we trust in him. And so if we belong to Jesus this Palm Sunday, we can approach this strange time we find ourselves in with new perspective and new hope. In this time of suffering, knowing that God is good, that God has given us salvation, that he is good to us in suffering. We can say to God, I don't know what you're doing. I'm worried and confused and fearful and scared. I don't know what you're doing. But you're God. And I am not. And you are always good. And so even though this looks confusing. And doesn't seem to make any sense. I'll trust in you. It's good to wait on the Lord. Even when it doesn't seem like it. God is always good. Even when we can't see that. His faithfulness towards us is great, even when things are chaotic and scary. And at times like this, when we find that we don't have what we desperately want, we can know with a sure and certain hope that because of Jesus, our suffering servant king, we have exactly what we need. Let's trust in him together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're good. Would you help us to remember that at all times? We thank you for your goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, who gave up his life so that we could be called your children. That we could be safe and secure for all eternity. And we thank you that even in times of suffering and sorrow, you are good to us. You have goodness for us. And that you want us to know that. Would you help us know that? Would you give us assurance by your spirit? Would you help us to trust in Jesus? And it's in his name we pray. Amen. One of the great delights in these online services is the opportunity to catch up with our mission partners serving the Lord around the world. We've been anxious for Luke and Karis who are working in London and it's good to hear from them and to be reminded of the challenging work in which they're engaged. Hello everyone in Portadown. Um, thanks very much for taking the time to think of us and to, and to pray for us over here in London. Um, it's a very strange time of course. A lot of our ministry that we would regularly be involved in day to day has just stopped completely and some stuff we've had to rethink and change how we do it. Uh, the prison work, for example, neither Karis or I can actually go inside the prison at the minute and um, there's been some cases inside and sadly all the guys are just locked up in their cells for most of the time. They can only really get out to go and get their medication at the minute so it's, it's difficult in there. Um, I would love it if you could remember to pray for the men inside the prison. Um, I can't even imagine what it must be like. They must just be going out of their minds. Um, thankfully, they've been given some extra phone credits so they can try and stay in touch with families. And what we're doing is, because we can't see them face to face, we've had to get a little bit creative. So we've been burning CDs um, that we can take in, the guys can listen to, those that have CD players in their cells, with um, our church's audio. Um, of the sermon and of the worship music. Um, we're also printing off and designing little magazines for the guys with Bible studies and testimonies and letters of encouragement from us to give to them. Um, and I think that's been a real blessing to them. So we're trying to continue to disciple people through indirect contact. Um, so pray that that continues to go well. It's actually the idea and the content is actually spread to some other prisons in London. There's some guys in Brixton who are receiving that stuff as well. Um, Another really cool thing that has come out of this is we got in touch with um, a really popular Christian rapper who we know a lot of the guys know and like, and he loved our idea of what we were doing and donated some tracks from his new album 
um, which we've burnt off and given to the guys in there. So hopefully not just the Christian men in there that we're trying to disciple, but their cellmates and other guys on the wings will hear that music, they'll hear the sermons, they'll hear um, the guys reading the Bible together and praying, and hopefully the gospel will continue to spread. Um, another big part of the work, of course, is the homeless community that I try and reach out to and support. We've had to shut our drop-ins. It's just not safe to have people gathering, obviously, at the minute. Um, thankfully, a lot of the rough sleepers in London have been moved into hotels um, around the city. I think the, one of the statistics I read was there's normally something like 11,000 people sleeping out in the streets of London, and they've got 300 and something in the hotels, which, and I mean, it's it's good, but a lot more can be done. Um, so pray that people will um, receive that help that's being offered to them. A lot of people are t we know are turning it down. They just don't trust the authorities. They don't trust the system. Um, but it's just not safe for people to be out in the streets at the minute. Um, we're trying to deliver food to people where we can. We're getting calls and emails coming in saying people need this, they need that. And we're trying to meet those needs through the, the local churches as best we can. Um, Karis and I are working quite a bit. Well, Karis is doing most of the work with um, a local charity that we work with that support um, sort of single moms and, and pregnant women who are on their own in the area. So we've jumped on our bikes and cycled up to some, someone's flat and dropped off some nappies outside the door when they can't get out and things like that. So yeah, pray for that as well and all those um, people who are really just completely isolated and on their own and don't really know where to go to, to get help. We'd also love your prayer for the staff in Pentonville. Um, as you can imagine, it's just become such a tough place to work and morale is at like an all time low. Um, we've already sadly lost one staff member to COVID-19. Um, he actually worked for the prison um, for years and years, since 1992. Um, was really well known and loved staff member and it's shaken a lot of people up. Um, so we'd love you to just hold the staff there in your prayers um, as they kind of try and operate on a, um, with a lot less people. One of the things we're um, doing is because the church is so local to the prison and there's a lot of midweek groups that are really local to the prison. Um, we've contacted a social enterprise that we know of called Rise and Bloom that do bakery with inmates um, and training. Um, and they are going to bake 100 brownies and um, send those into the prison uh, accompanied with some notes that are being written by members of our church community to encourage the officers to tell them that they've not been forgotten, that they're being prayed for um, and that we'd love to continue praying for them so there's an opportunity for them to write prayer requests on that note and send it back to us so that um, the whole prison is being surrounded with prayer and love and support so um, do keep them in your uh, hearts and your minds as well. Yeah, and finally, I'd love you just to think about um, and pray for what the transition at this time that London City Mission is going through as well. It's a very uncertain time. Um, I don't know what my ministry or my work is going to look like in King's Cross going forward. So just pray certainly for wisdom for, for me to know what to do and for um, all those that work at London City Mission as they just try and move forward and keep doing what God has, has called them to do. So yeah, thanks so much for for remembering us and for praying for us and do drop me an email if you want to stay in touch i would love to, to hear from you if you want to just um have a chat i'm sure a lot of people are sitting at home on their laptops a lot of the time so um yeah get in touch thanks very much right let's bring our prayers before god the needs of others let us pray our gracious god we come before your throne where we find mercy in our time of need we pray for those who have gone from our fellowship to serve your kingdom, your cause throughout the world. And in particular, we remember Luke and Karis as they work for you in London. We pray that you would be a hedge around them to keep them well and safe. That you would be the supply for all their need, particularly for wisdom to minister in challenging days. May they continue to find creative ways to bring the good news of Jesus Christ into the prison. May they be able to encourage and support from distance those who they seek to disciple after Christ. And we pray, Lord, that we would see a great harvest of souls coming through this ministry in spite of the difficulties and constraints upon them. Lord, open up the pathway that they could support those who are in deep 
need. We pray that you would fill them with compassion for those they encounter on the streets around them. And may sufficient resources be available that those who might go hungry and feel very much isolated would know the compassion and concern of Christ's people. Father, we pray for the leadership of our nation. Give wisdom to those who have difficult decisions to make. Lord, we pray particularly for those on the front line of health care provision, that you might protect them and provide for them, that they might be enabled to do their job well and in safety. We pray for those who are struggling with ill health, that they might know healing and restoration. We pray, Lord, that great advances would be made against this virus and its destructive power. Lord, protect those we love, our family, our friends. Keep them safe and uh, look after them while we are separated from them. Lord, bless our fellowship. We pray that you might meet every need and enable us with your grace and wisdom to continue to show your love to those around us, our neighbours, our friends, so that in every way possible we would make the love of Jesus Christ known practically. So Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to pray before you, knowing that you hear all our requests and answer in part. Do good things in these days in our land to your glory and for the saving of many souls. We ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to bring our time together to a close as we praise God singing, I will wait for you. Thank you for joining with us. Please, if you can, set aside. 
the hour between 3 and 4 p.m. this afternoon to pray uh, for this crisis in which we find ourselves. Believers all across this island are coming together to seek the Lord for these difficult days. So if you can, please set some portion of that hour apart for this task. And now let's close with a benediction. May grace, mercy and peace from Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.